Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft 2! It's gonna be a match between Cure and Serral here on Simulacrum, the latter edition. This SCV is up to no good. Top left hand corner, currently proxying, is the Blue Terran player Cure. He's a finalist in GSL Season 1 for 2020. I'm casting this before I know who wins, but he very well have may won his first GSL. And in the bottom right is the red Zerg player, Serral. All right, man. I say it all the time. Proxying Zerg players as Terran is worth it. Even if you don't kill the Zerg player, you're sometimes so far ahead that you can win anyway. All right, man. 16 hatch. Yep, 16 hatch. 18 gas. 17 uh, spawning pool here. And double proxy Rex. Triple proxy racks here from cure holy smokes and some gas so let's see it could be marauders it could be reapers it's not just straight marines in other words here my goodness this game is getting off to a very very good start here sometimes we have to wait a little bit to see any action but holy smokes the action is already here and man this is a good proxy spot at least according to the overlord scouting paths that Cyril has chosen here there is no way this is going to get spotted. Yeah, it's a Reaper. So the Reaper's name. Ah, uh, do we want to use the Reaper's name here? If it's a proxy... Ah, heck, let's do it. Let's do this thing. This Reaper's name is Lucifer. Born of the Underworld, the Lord of Darkness renounced all his powers and ventured into the world. He chose to materialize in Core Hall, but as soon as he set foot on the planet, he was ID'd by a law enforcer. Since he had no papers on him, he was immediately arrested, charged for being homeless and jobless, and enrolled into the Reaper program. If he dies, he sheds his mortal body and gets his powers back. This would be unfortunate, since he vowed to exact terrible revenge on everyone involved, including both players, the caster, and viewers, their friends and relatives, to the third degree. So the Reaper shows up, and Cyril knows it's a proxy at this point, so he's like, alright. This is nuts. Uh, my pool's done. I've got some lings on the way. Making queens might actually... Oh, no. Drones killed. But two Reapers show up, and suddenly we're in a lot of trouble. Suddenly this is very difficult to hold. Double Reaper showing up. You don't have a queen out. Your lings are slow. And sure, slow lings can hold off one Reaper, but two is very difficult, as we see. Two drones down. Three drones down. There's a queen here, but I'm not sure if it's enough to deal with all of these Reapers. There's three at a time in production. They're trying to burn down this queen. The KD-8 charge is helping immensely. Four Reapers are here. Uh, our Reaper's got five kills. Lucifer has five kills, you guys. He's alive. This might actually work out for everybody, because, you know, if he dies, then he's going to exact a wrench on all of us. As Troll Superstar said when he put this comment in about a month ago. Anyway, man, can Cyril hold this? I don't know. KD8 charge actually knocking himself back, which sucks a little bit. Look at him moving the wounded Reaper back. The micro here is nuts. The lings are coming out in just large numbers, but they don't have speed, and therefore they kind of suck. But any time that Cyril can buy here to get speed on his lings is going to be huge for him. This is so many Reapers, though. This is so many. The lings want to stay alive, because once they get speed, they'll be a million times better. But they're slow right now, so they suck. And they're trying to buffer for these queens as well as they can. One Reaper does go down. Speed's done. And oh my gosh, did Cyril hold this? Ooh, Reaper, seven kills. Lucifer has seven kills. He's on the front line. No, no! <laughs> Lucifer gets killed. Oh no. Well, uh, he's going to exact terrible revenge on all of us. So it was nice knowing everyone. This will be my last cast, apparently. Assuming terrible revenge involves me not being able to cast ever again for some terrible reason. All right. Uh, hmm. Well, shoot. Did Cyril just hold that? I mean, he kind of did. He's at 16 workers. Not that Cure's on two bases and killing it either. He's on one base with 17 himself. So it's like, hmm. I don't know. Lings are cruising across trying to get something done. And oh my gosh. Is Cyril just going to destroy this? There was an angle there where the Lings could have gotten up and gotten in tier and caused some problems. But the Reapers came back home, shut it down a little bit. Lings can't really take down these barracks. They could force a liftoff if they wanted to, though. I love the creep spread out to the edges here. Omicron will be very happy to see that one. But yeah, man, it's just three Reapers at a time. That is, We are committed, ladies and gentlemen. Cure does not have a transition. We have not had a giant proxy Rax play in some time. I don't know if Serral's ready for this. He's droning up. 
Like, he's not really making any more Zerglings. I don't know if he has enough here. Look at how fast. Nice transfuse on the queen. Gonna see how fast the queens die here, but transfuse is good unit. Transfuse is a really good unit. That Reaper dies in midair, which is not something any Reaper wants to experience. But if you're gonna die, doing it in midair is actually kind of cool, I guess. If you're into cool deaths. Yeah, once you have enough Reapers, you can engage with spines. You're doing okay. Kitty get charges, making sure the links can't get much of a surround there. That's exactly how this needs to work. We've been seeing this for years. Cure is just trying to make sure he doesn't get into the late game versus Serral. He doesn't want to do it. And I can't necessarily blame him for that today. So natural base coming up for Cure. Natural base for Serral is a little bit saturated here. It's looking okay. I mean, Cure's oversaturated in his main, or he will be very soon. And the natural is a bit of a ways off here. So Reapers, they're just playing defense, though. Not really getting the value out of them that you want to. You know what I mean, Gene. All right, so these links are toast. The Reapers, again, getting home, like, right in the nick of time. Cure's game sense of when he needs these Reapers to be home is incredible. He's bringing the barracks back. We're settling into a more macro-style game here. Is Serral interested in doing that? He's getting a lair. He's not taking a third hatch. I don't see any drones in position to do that. Oh, it'd be so good for Serral just to go into a Roach Ravager thing off this with speed. Or maybe a Nidus would be insane. Although this many Reapers, I think, could take down a Nidus from pretty easily. They did knock down the armor on that a while ago. I don't know if I've seen that. I haven't seen a group of, like, ten Reapers try to take down a Nidus before. In the current patch, anyway. I don't know. The Reapers see the lack of a third. And they're like, hmm, this is not good for us. Oh, okay. Spire time. Is that Banshee Cloak? Of course it is. Cure. No. Don't go Banshee Cloak. When your opponent's going Spire, it's not going to go well for you. Oh, it's just going to be like Mutas and Corruptors, huh? I don't know that Cure has this game, y'all, is what I'm trying to say. It is far from a standard game. Serral's going for a Baneling Nest and a Spire on two bases against a two-basing Terran. Kind of setting up over here on the right side to take a third base, but I don't know. I don't know if he is. Man, transfuses are everything. If these queens just straight up fought against those reapers, they'd all die. But the transfuses change the game. As most spellcasting does in StarCraft is game changey. Okay. He sees the tech lab, and he knows it's researching something. So he's pretty fairly well prepared for Cloak Banshee. He is getting actual spores up, or spore up at his main anyway. And there's your third base coming in. Okay, so we're settling in right here. It's a handful of mutos, which in the hand of Serral are about a million times better than your average Zerg player. Like, I try to make mutas, and I lose all of them. Raiders even tried to make mutas on the channel recently and just lost, like, 50 of them and then lost. So, especially against Terran, it can be very difficult to pull off here. But I've seen Serral do it in ways that are just... It's just music. It really is. The way he controls them, the way he keeps them alive, it's hard to do, but he just makes it look so easy. And that's why he's, you know, the former world champion over here. It takes a while for Hellions and Reapers to take down a hatchery, but they can if there are enough numbers of them as there are here. But it's Mutas, man. They are out. They are scary. They are working on plus one attack. Is there enough anti-air here? There's like four Marines. I don't know, man. I don't know if there's enough here. That Mutalisk. Yeah, Cure is not ready for this at all. Like 0% preparation here. He has no turrets up anywhere. The Mutas just, you know... Taking out SCV, six of them go down, none of the Mutalisks die. He's not making like a hundred, he just got five or six. Very casually, finding Marines dying here, getting the SCV building, the missile turret. Getting out of there before the missile turret finishes construction. Takes one hit, escapes nicely, 11 SCVs have died. This is what I'm talking about. This is exactly what... Serral, man, he's disgustingly good. So, oh, hey. Some Hellions, huh? We'll kill those. The Reapers I'm not worried about. The Hellions more so. Let's focus those down. They get a couple of them there. And then maybe back into the main base. While we're at it, we'll just abuse the fact that we can fly. This doesn't work for low-level players because you fly over the Marines once they all die. But Serral just doesn't do it. Takes a couple of missile turret hits. Gets a couple more SCVs. Flies out of there. Just keeping Cure at home. And he's droning back home. He is on 58 workers to 33 SCVs for Cure. I mean, that this is this is it, man. This is why you clicked on this game, is because it's Serral, and this is what he does. He is making more Mutalisks. He has 11 now. Plus one attack is about complete. 
Baker is going to try to win this thing with a Marine Tank style operation here. Oh, he's pulling the boys. Cure. Cure. We're pulling the boys. All right. Ooh, this looks dicey. This looks super ultra dicey. Here for Serral a little bit. What does he have? He's got Banelings. 17 of them are in production. He does have centrifugal hooks. All right. He's probably going to be fine here, I have to say. The Muters are coming home to help deal with this. Maybe pick off that tank. That'd be nice. The pre-splits here for Cure are super good. Like, really? The Marines protecting the tank, though. That's nice. Oh, one Muta does go down. But the Banelings cruising in. The another Muta goes down here. But if he can crush this attack, he's in a very good position. 16 of Cure's SEVs went down there. He brought them along. They're dead now. It's 60 to 21 workers. Serral just has to hold... That's all he's got to do. He's lost a couple mutalisks, two in total here. Tissue regeneration's coming in. Muta's at the front, actually just jumping right on top of this. Are there not enough Marines? Not in that location there weren't. And then the Mar oh, they jump up and the Banelings crash on in. The positioning here is disgustingly good. Tank does get picked off. Handful of Marines remaining here, but 20 Lings in production. Uh, they don't have any attack or armor upgrades, but I'm not sure how much it matters. Cure is really keeping the pressure up, but too many Banelings, too many Mutalists, and that's your good game. Serral wins game one of our sneaky two for here today. Wow, that was a match. I, the fact that Serral held off against all of those Reapers with the combined might of Transfuse and Zerglings with speed eventually was very impressive. Yes, he did lose some drones in the early go-ins there. He did get caught entirely by surprise by that proxy. But he was able to make some drones into spores to keep them alive. He was able to kind of hide them, keep the lings alive until they have speed. Like, I would have absolutely run those slow lings out into those reapers and died and not had them when they got speed and then died. But not Serral, the patience. The patience on display is elite. That is why he is one of the best in the entire world. And Kier almost got him. Kier almost got him. That push, bringing the SCVs along was nice. There wasn't a whole ton for Serral back home. He droned a lot. But that was his advantage. He kept up with the injects. He kept making lings. He got the banelings with the speed. Those were his priorities. No attack upgrades for the lings or banelings. Just 0-0 zero, zero across the board. But the mutas were there to help. And he got the win. So pretty even. 7,600 resources lost for both players. Five mutas went down. But 43 marines went down. 19 uh, 19 of those Reapers. 29 SCVs to only 6 drones. That's hard. It's a hard bunch of numbers if you're trying to beat Serral. It is. <sighs> All right. Good stuff. Really good stuff. So that's it for game one. Let's move into game numero dos. We'll be right back. The Sneaky Twofer. It continues here on Triton, the ladder edition. Top left hand corner. It is Serral. Bottom right, it's Cure. I did forget to mention, this is from Katowice, the most recent ESL tournament. Hmm, I hope TSL releases their replays because, man, there are a lot of upsets in that. And I'm pretty sure it's not done by the time this replay will get released. Which is basically uh, May the 9th. Or the 10th. Seven days, right? Yes. Seven days is a week. Hope everybody is staying safe and healthy during this quarantine time and... Era of protests. Uh, yeah, protests against basically police brutality. I know there's a problem with it. And I just feel like raising awareness is very important right now. But if that's all we're going to do, then I don't, don't think anything is going to change. Just like the Ferguson protest back in 2012, 2013, 2014, right around there. <laughs> Anyway, without getting too political, I just feel like we need some change from the top down. And currently, I don't feel like we're in a good position for that. <sighs> but maybe after November. Anyway, it's very complicated. Just I'm watching the news like the rest of you guys and seeing what's going on. It's discouraging to say the least. And I do hope, I do hope for some improvement in certain areas of American society. All right, so we do have a second Reaper on the way. Gosh, dang it, I do have a Reaper name. Come back. Ah, nope, oh, nope, hang on. Okay, so this one's Harley Quinn, which I think we've done before. Emperor Menx sent a psychologist. Where are we? 
Psychologist to figure out if taking actions that consistently lead to the murder of millions for his own amusement is a bad thing. Dr. Harleen Francis Quinze not only encouraged such behavior, but rapidly became obsessed with Menx psychosis. She started participating in Menx slaughter and dressed up like a clown for some reason. However, she made a mistake of asking Menx to pay for their psychology sessions. <laughs> and now she's in a reaper suit. All right, that was a good one, Joseph Atwell. I like it. So cruising on up. This looks like a much, much more standard game. Obviously, Reaper shows his face, her face rather. This is Harley. And says, kablooey! And doesn't get any kills. Queen, focus, the, do it. Yeah. Oh, close. Could have turned around, I think, maybe and gotten a Link kill, but might have died in the process. So not really worth it, no. Overlord in position to scout things out here on Triton. Speed about done. Might end up getting... Let's see if he does the same thing. Let's see if he gets Overlord speed with that first 100 gas after speed. 96, 100, and he does. Man, it's so important. It really helps a lot to have Overlord speed. One for scouting, two for running away from stuff. Like, if there's a Marine chasing you, you can actually run away from it. Get onto some high ground or something with your Overlord instead of just dying because you move at the speed of a dead sloth. I mean, they did improve. They did improve the basic speed for overlords like a year or so, maybe even longer now because time has no meaning. So they are a little bit faster without the speed upgrade, but having speed is just, it is a night and a day difference. Are we tech lab, starport? Hmm. This could be battle cruiser. Double gas is up. This could also just be cloak banshee, which he was kind of going for in the last game and changed his mind when the spire was out, which is a very intelligent read from Cure. Uh, yeah, I think this tech lab is going to be for the starport based on the fact that the barracks is building yet another tech lab. And we'll see what it is. We'll see what we decide to do with it. Hellion's trying to get stuff done, but queen defense, links with speed defense is going to be ample against a couple Hellions. This isn't like eight Hellions, although we're working on it. It's got four out, and there's uh, five and six in production here. Liberator on the way. What does he need so many tech labs for? All right, so the factory is going to go into the tech lab. Okay, so it's just going to be upgrades, and it's going to be tanks. Look at him swinging back around. He's like, I just got scouted. I was going to make tanks, but let's make some more Hellions. Now <laughs> that Cyril thinks it's going to be tanks, let's just go mass Hellion and see what we can do here. Is he making an armory? No, that's a third CC, though. So this is a much, 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 much more standard match than the last one. Spores up, recognizing there's something coming out of that starport that can kill me. Probably a Liberator based on the fact that there's not an add-on there. So it's not a Banshee. But having Spore is useful anyway. The positioning here a little bit different than if it would be against Banshees. Banshees are more inside your mineral line you're protecting. And outside if it's a Liberator because she's going to be set up far away. Makes perfect sense. So yeah, Hellions cruising across the map here. Baneling Nest on the way. Taking down some of these Creep Tumors. That is a change they've proposed, though it has not gone through yet. Making Creep Tumors light. Which Terran fans just rejoice for immensely because it's so easy for them to kill creep tumors. That tumor would be dead if it was light instead of armored, which, which it is now. Which is just always like, creep tumors are armored? They're so squishy. But I mean, roaches are pretty squishy and they're armored too. So, <laughs> I don't know. The armor tag is not description. It is... Oh gosh, did he stay a little bit too long? Ah, uh, he stayed a little too long and all of his hellions are dead. He's trying to make the best of it by escaping, but there is no escape. Yeah, I was expecting him to pull out just in time, get out of there, get off the creep, stay alive, but he stayed in for just just a second and a half too long and got caught and murdered. And now Cyril has board control, map control, can drone all the heck he wants. Not like he wasn't doing that already. He's like oversaturated on three bases right now with his, you know, 66 workers, fourth base getting started. Might as well, better late than never here. I mean, it's not late, but... Yeah, and Cure, he's in trouble. If he was planning on using those Hellions for any kind of support in his upcoming attack, they're dead now. Losing those early Hellions is really brutal for Terran. I don't know how Cure wins this thing. Hydralisk Den coming up for the Zerg player. He's got a tank out finally, and here comes a drop. Widowmine's in production. Widowmine's are a bit of a come-from-behind unit. You get a couple big, nice Widowmine hits, and you can be back in a game. That you felt like you were out of. Look at him. 74 workers on the three bases. He's oversaturated everywhere. But he's going to be able to fully saturate this fourth base when it's done. I don't see this a lot. 
But I think he made a lot of lings to deal with those Hellions and is trying to make up for the economy. And he's doing a fantastic job of it, mind you. His income is fantastically good. His fourth base is going to pop. The third base by Cure is landing. So that's good for him. Centrifugal hooks on the way. All the standard things that you know and love. Hit that like button, by the way, if you're enjoying this cast. I'm having a good time with it. That first game was definitely non-standard, even if this one is a little bit more along those lines. Just hitting the like button and leaving a comment just helps the algorithm know that people enjoy my stuff. What's funny is that thumbs down when like negative comments count for comments and reactions. Like YouTube doesn't Care. It's like, are a lot of people watching and reacting to what they're seeing? Great, let's promote it. And <laughs> it's an interesting way of doing it. They have a hard problem, right? How to determine what's quality on YouTube is way too complicated. Anyway, we got Hydralisks, we got Lings, we got Banelings, we have Widow Mines and Marines and Medivacs. Widow Mine catches nice! Big time hit on those Banelings. They get nothing done for Serral there. Drilling Claws coming in here too. And so far, I mean, Cure's not as far behind as I thought he would be. I mean, the income is definitely favoring Serral right now. But it's 79 to 69 workers. The fourth base instantly saturated. The fifth base coming up here, too. I mean, that group just gets wiped out. There's just, I don't know, man. Cure has not done enough damage in the early stages. That one Baneling hit was good. But if you're that close in the first eight minutes, 2,000 to 1,600 resources lost. The Zerg players lost that close to what you've lost. You're not in a good position. You're going to have a bad time. Anyway, this deck's pretty good. Bailing's getting cancelled out. Bailing's getting target fired. Creep Tumor's going down. The Lings are the buffer here, though. And then the Bailing gently crash into their face and everyone dies. Got some damage done on that fourth, fifth base, though, didn't he? He did. But this is just... Sarah's going to be maxed out here in about a minute and a half based on the production tab. Uh, Widowmind does have Drilling Claws. So this, over, this Overseer needs to come over and help to get rid of it. There's not one... There's one over here, though. There you go. Splitting his army up. Kerr trying to do what the current meta is in TVZ, which is just have big scary attacks coming at the Zerg player from all angles at all times. Kiting back a lot, making good trades. That's what we need to see here. And I'm not sure... I'm not sure Cure has the wherewithal to pull that off just in sheer economy right now. But he's got upgrades. Two twos finishing up. Two twos finishing up for Serral too. Just the Widowmine getting some decent hits. The tank firing on the Hydras makes them retreat because of course it does. Serral might try to expand over in this direction, but I don't quite see it. Yeah, see, that's what you need. Win here while you're winning up here at the same time. And if you can win a whole bunch of times, maybe not huge wins. You're not wiping out the entire Zerg army, but you're just making good trades over and over and over and over. And then eventually you win. It's like win through attrition, basically. It's an old, old-timey war strategy that's been around for millennia. But you don't have to win big if you can win little a hundred times is how it works. I guess war by attrition is more about how many of your own units you lose over time. But that's really part of it here, too. Yeah, I guess, you know, thinking about it, War of Attrition is more about you just have way more unit, like men than your opponent does. And sure, you lost 10,000 men and they lost 5,000, but you had more to lose, so you're fine, right? It's kind of what Zerg does more than anything else here, but I wonder what knights the Banelings rolling on through, but they're off creep. The Widowmine, not sure what to fire on, just gets killed instead by a Baneling, which is not a way to go if you are a Widowmine. Just enough. That's some good tank fire on that ramp, but not enough. Just so much Zerg down there. So I'm trying to think, what's the term for you? Just win a million little engagements by just a hair, and then you end up winning the war as a result. I don't know if there is a term for that. Maybe we need to make one up. Although there are probably some military history buffs. Uh, Hardcore History released a new episode actually today on the 3rd. So if you've been waiting for that and you didn't know about it, there's a new episode out enjoy the hardcore history quite a bit. I haven't been able to get into it because it's like four hours an episode and I just don't like I don't have the time for four hour episodes of anything really. 
Uh, my commute is not that long. So I think Serral has this. Like, I'm looking at it. It is not looking great for Cure. Army supply down. Overall supply down. Worker count down. Cure's just not winning the engagements in the way that he needs to be. The kiting is nice. The Marauders coming in is nice to absorb those Baneling shots. Really very good. The problem is that Hydras are very good versus Marauders. If these were Ultras, I'd feel better about it. But Marauders suck against Hydralists. Uh, Marines do better. Marines do better against Hydras without question. And they flank into the right side and chase this away. Sixth base from Serral is done. Fourth base from Cure is running happily. Plus three armors coming in. Plus three melee is coming in. He's not getting missile attack upgrades, which tells me he might just throw down an ultra list cavern here. Maybe he just knows the Lings and Banelings upgrades are more important. There's the ultra list cavern. Okay. All right, all right. He's got one coming in, guys. Ah, the Terran music. It's so good. Dang, Serral's attacking into an entrenched Terran army at a base. I tell people not to do this all the time, but Serral's like, I'm ahead. Let's call it good. Those Banelings kind of rolling into their devs a little bit. Blinding Cloud shutting down that tank temporarily, but look at Serral retreating from the position. Two SCVs go down, but a lot of Banelings died there. Is he coming back? Dude, Serral, you madman. You madman that you are. 3-3 three, three is finishing up right now. Is Cure done on 3-3? Three, three? He certainly is, because he's a good Terran player, obviously. Because of shells on the way, just to slow down some of these units as they're roaring towards him. Oh, he unburled the Widow Mines. Okay, well, this is a big-time attack. Blinded Cloud on the left side. The splits are pretty good from Cure, though. And I don't know about this. I'm not sure there's enough Hydras remaining for the remaining Bile present. The Banelings get wiped out. The Hydras decide to just stand in and fight. This is not a planetary. Because it's the third base, is there just enough Hydraless tier to win the battle? And it looks like there just might barely be enough. The Orbital Command goes down, which is massive. The repair did not come in from Cure. He was not expecting that to happen. Hydra DPS is insanely good, even if they don't have any attack upgrades, although one is on the way. Kindness Plating coming in, so I feel like this is just going to be... Serral's just going to... Oh, he doesn't have the bank for it. I was going to say he's going to make like 10 Ultralisks, but no, he can't. He has like 300, 300 in the bank right now, which is one Ultra. Uh, Widow Mines catching some decent hits. Nothing life-changing there. Nothing earth-shattering. 95 to 83 army supply. Cure standing in. Widow Mines doing some friendly fire damage there. That is not great. Widow Mines, go! It's catching a bunch of those Banelings. Tanks going down to the Baneling fire. Hydra's coming into the third base once again. Marauders just trying not to take Baneling hits, but if they have to, it's better than the Marine Buddies, and that's your good game. Serral ends up winning both matches there. Pretty hard-fought games, I would say, though. Cure really stepped it up. He played well in that last game. Just losing those Hellions, I don't know how you recover from that <laughs> against Serral is the problem. Making one mistake like that can be so brutal. He was making ultras there. But yeah, I like Hydras uh, against your opponent. If they're make, not making a ton of tanks, if it's Marauders, yeah. I'd much rather have Hydras versus Marauders than Ultralisks, as we've seen recently on the channel. 105 Banelings died, by the way. That's not like exploded on their targets. That's dead. But 27,000 resources lost for Serral. 22,000 lost for Cure. Just War of Attrition. Uh, just too much economy throughout the last 10 minutes here. Serral was able to expand... The Hellions were gone. He didn't have to invest in defense all that much. And you could tell. It showed. 133 Marines died. One Orbital Command died. One Command Center. What was that? I don't know when that was. Uh, 33 Widow Mines, 20 SCVs to exactly zero drones killed, which is not how you beat a Zerg player, is zero drones in 15 minutes. So just great. Really unquestionably great Serral stuff there against Cure here today. And that's going to be it for me. So, this has been Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.